I'm wearing this uh, EEG helmet. This is an electroencephalogram. It is picking up signals from my brain and transmitting them wirelessly to a computer. And we use the computer to interpret the brain signals so that it can tell what I'm thinking and how I'm feeling. And in particular, I can execute mental commands. This technology is very new. Uh, it has been on sale for about uh, one year. So this is a real product that I'm wearing. Uh, it's the Emotive Epoch Neuro Headset. Uh, it's for sale even to consumers in the United States already. Uh, but the majority of our market is to uh, researchers in the field of neuroscience and robotics and computing, and also to game developers and people who are developing other applications for computers. So the purpose of the device is to interface between the brain directly with the computer. This device allows us to, uh, to command different things to the computer. So first of all, it picks up my facial expressions. So as I raise and lower my eyebrows, smile, clench my teeth, look around, wink, blink, the computer can see what I'm doing. It doesn't need a camera, it actually just responds directly to the headset. So I could use this to animate things in the game. It can also detect how I'm feeling. So it, it will detect my level of excitement, my level of frustration, my level of engagement or boredom, and whether I'm meditating or not. So it can actually assist the computer to react to me in a much more natural way. So it knows whether it's causing me to become frustrated, whether I'm getting excited, whether I'm angry, or what sort of music I'd like to listen to. It could do all sorts of things like that. How I'm reacting to material that's being presented to me. And finally, I could give it actual mental command. So I could, I could think about making something lift in the air and a command is generated which the computer can understand and the computer can execute that command either in a game or in real life. So we can use it to control a wheelchair or a game or a fighter jet or any number of other things. The system is very quick to adapt to each individual. So the facial expressions are built in. They work out of the box. You can fine tune them to suit your face which takes maybe five minutes. The emotional detections, they also work out of the box. Uh, and we can tell whether, when you have deflections in each direction. It takes the system maybe a couple of hours to determine the range of your emotions, of each emotion. So you may be used to driving taxis in Italy, so you have a range of excitement that starts high and goes incredible or you may be the kind of person who could land an aeroplane on the Hudson River without any uh, power and your excitement level barely registers. We want the system to be able to recognise your full range of, uh, of excitement. So it takes maybe a few hours of observing you to fine tune uh, to, your, to your situation. The mental commands, it takes approximately eight seconds to train each individual action. Uh, if you have some experience in using the system. So it takes eight seconds to train when you're not thinking of anything and then eight seconds for each action. Uh, an experienced user can do that. Um, a novice takes a little bit longer. Uh, the training time is the same and they get a response almost immediately, but their level of control is a little bit less because we have two systems which are learning in this, in this process. One is the, the headset and computer is learning what you're trying to think. The other one is that you're learning how to use the machine, so the human is also learning and it's, it's a little bit like learning to use a musical instrument. If you're experienced and you know what you're doing, you can, you can pick it up and use it straight away. Otherwise, a novice can make some nice noise, but it takes a little bit of effort to get used to it. We think around about 10 hours of, of training of the user is more than enough to become an expert. The difficulties that we've already overcome uh, are many. The, the system is designed for consumers, which means it has to be very simple to use. Somebody has to be able to pick it up and just put it on. Uh, medical EEG systems can take up to two hours to fit, and they need a dedicated technician. This system is a one-size-fits-all headset. It's adapted so that whatever shape and size your head is, lumps and bumps don't matter, moving your head around as you clench your jaw doesn't matter. The system has independent suspension on each sensor, so that took a little bit of effort to get the hardware right. Um, 
the difficulty then is in the software, so training it to recognize all of the mental states. So we have, how do you teach a system that's, uh, that this means frustration? Well, we actually took a large number of volunteers and put them through some terrible experiences, playing games where we overwhelmed them with bad guys, where we made the controls not work suddenly, and they got very frustrated, for example, and we recorded all of the information and used that to develop our own detections. So there's a large amount of effort already gone in. Even so, we're very much at the start of this, uh, this brain-computer interface technology, and uh, I expect it will develop rapidly over the next 10 or 15 years. We're using uh, fairly computationally intensive uh, methods already, and computers are easily able to cope with that now. In 10 years, computers will be much more efficient, faster, more powerful, and we'll be able to use much more uh, complex, mathematically challenging methods of detecting what's going on inside the brain. So this, the, the sky is the limit for this technology.